the children of the kingdom of light can learn great lessons by studying the lifestyle of a lion. Lions have some unique attributes that are present in the kingdom of light, in the realm of the spirit. The kingdom of light is a society of spiritual lions in the realm of the spirit. And our perfect understanding of physical lions will help us to fulfill our dominion mandate on earth. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In Second Kings chapter 17, verse 25, and so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they fear not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them. We slew some of them. The Lord sent lions among them. We slew some of them. Cana was infested by lions. Lions attack Cana. And the Lord sent lions among them. So lions represent the enemies of the kingdom of light in the realm of the spirit. But mind you, the kingdom of light is the kingdom of lions. It takes lions to fight lions. Cana is a society of spiritual lions. And after they've committed sin of idolatry, the only way by which God can deal with them is to send lion. It takes lions to fight lions. Lions can only fight lions. Chickens cannot fight lions. Dogs as powerful as they were could not fight lions any dog that entered the den of lion will die so dogs cannot fight lions they can only bark they cannot fight lions so if you want to fight lions you must use lions and God used lions to deal with the children of Israel in Cana. There are features of lions that are unique. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. There are basic features of lions that are unique. We see one of the features of lion in Judges chapter 14 verse 18. And Solomon killed a lion and he gave a riddle. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? He asked them, after giving the riddle, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? That is the riddle. So anyone that can unveil this riddle will receive a wonderful prize. But nobody, no one could unveil the riddle. What is stronger than a lion? Is there anything in this world that is, that is still stronger than a lion? That means lions are superior in strength. Can you please write it? Lions are superior in strength. They have unique strength. God gave them unique strength in this world. For a lion which is strongest among beasts and turn it not away from any. This is seen in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30. 
A lion is the strongest among beasts. A lion is the strongest among the beasts in the forest. And turneth not away for any. They are superior in strength. The kingdom of Christ cannot turn away for the kingdom of darkness. It is impossible. Children of light cannot turn away for children of darkness. This is a violation of spiritual law. You cannot violate the spiritual law for the kingdom of darkness. You will rather die on the battlefield. And it is impossible for the children of light to die on the battlefield. If you can apply the kingdom principles on the battlefield, a lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. We cannot turn away for any. And we cannot turn away from any battle. It is impossible in this kingdom. That means the church of God on earth is superior in strength. The church of God on earth is superior in spiritual strength. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 22 It says And of Dan He said Dan is a lion's web He shall leap from Bashan Dan is a young lion Springing out from Bashan So Bashan Is a company of lions Young lions In the realm of the spirit there is an atmosphere in the realm of the spirit called the atmosphere of Bashan. This atmosphere is part of the church of God in the realm of the spirit. And there are young lions springing out from Bashan. These young lions are active. The second unique attribute of lion is their activity they are very active lions are potent and lions are highly efficacious in battle they are very potent very powerful they are active with their strength always active even in their sleep they are active do you know that other beasts are always scared of a sleeping lion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Living beasts in the forest are scared of dead lion. The lion is dead, but beasts are still scared of dead lions. Because lions are active. Even in the realm of the dream. The kingdom of Christ must be active on it. The kingdom of Christ must be potent on it. Because we are young lions. It is the old lions. We are young lions. In the realm of the spirit. Springing out of the atmosphere of passion. Yes, Lord. In Second Samuel chapter seventeen, verse ten, and he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father David is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. The art of David is as the art of a lion. The art of David is as the art.
heart of a lion. It is possible for a man to carry the heart of a lion. So that is a proverb there. The heart of a man is as the heart of a lion. It means this man is highly courageous. On it. Because lions are courageous. So if you can carry the heart of a lion. If you can train your heart. To be like the heart of a lion. You will be courageous on it. You have courage. The kingdom of Christ is the kingdom of courageous men. In the realm of the spirit, they are courageous. They are courageous. They have this courage to face the challenges of life and overcome all these challenges. They are so courageous to go for battles. They go to battlefield and they overcome battles. Even difficult battles on earth. Hey. They are courageous. David was courageous on earth. Because he discovered the potential that is in him. David discovered the potential that was in him. Why he was on earth. He knew that he was a lion. In the kingdom of Christ. He saw Christ in the realm of the spirit. And he shouted. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He recognized himself as a lion. He was courageous. We should exercise our courage. The kingdom of Christ in this dispensation must demonstrate our courage. Men like Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 31 verse 4 also saw lions in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord spake unto Isaiah like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. The Lord spoke unto Isaiah like as the lion, the young lion roaring on his prey. So God was speaking to Isaiah like a lion in the realm of the spirit. Because God recognized Isaiah to be a lion. So lion was speaking to a lion. In the realm of the spirit, lion was giving instruction to another lion. The father of all lions was giving instruction to other lions. Isaiah was a lion. And he was able to take great mountains for God. He was able to climb high ease for God. Because he heard the voice of a lion. You cannot behave like a lion until you hear the voice of the father of all lions. Which is God. That means lions are fearless. Lions are fearless. They don't fear men. Lions are not afraid of men. So you must be fearless. You can't be fearless until you hear the voice of the fearless. You can easily fight against the spirit of fear. If you are a spiritual lion, in Naum, chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions? Where the li lion, even the old lion, walked and the lions were, and none made them afraid. 
where is the dwelling of the lions the fitting place of the lo- young lions they are fearless nothing can make them to be afraid nothing they can tear anything to pieces they can enter into any holes they can feed the dens with ravens they can attack other beasts easily they are fearless so the kingdom of christ must be fearless as we walk through the wilderness of our world we must be fearless fear must not dominate you you must be fearless on it days of calamities will come but you must be fearless days of storms will come but you must be fearless if you want to overcome the moment you are bold in the spirit and you are bold physically you will definitely overcome all the storms of life yes lord just be fearless boldness is power in the realm of the spirit for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of sound mind sound mind to be fearless you must train your mind train your mind please train your mind you must train your mind in this world you need a very large heart to carry the mandate a very large heart without a large heart you cannot carry the mandate yes lord in job chapter 10 verse 16 he said for it increased thou untest me as a fierce lion and again thou shoot thyself marvelous upon me thou untest me as a fierce lion that was job speaking there for god untest job god hunts for job like a fierce lion a fierce lion is a lion with a lot of energy and strong feelings a fierce lion is violent a fierce lion is violent so god hunts for job in a violent way have you ever seen the lion the mother lions carrying their babies the lioness in their mouth they use their teeth to carry the baby lion which are the lioness they carry the baby lions in their mouth they use their teeth to carry the baby lion they hunt for the baby lion in a very violent way and job said again thou shoot showest thou thyself marvelous upon me so the demonstration of love by the mother lion to the baby lion is violent and despite the fact that it is violent it is marvelous it is marvelous so the mother lion the lioness are powerful they carry the baby lion by using their teeth yes lord 
In this physical realm, you must be fierce. You must be violent. Be violent. In this physical realm, you must be violent in this physical realm. Be violent in the spirit realm. If you are not violent, you cannot overcome on it. You must possess the attribute of lions. Job again. In Job chapter 28 verse 8. He says the lions web, the young lions. Have not trodden it. Nor the fierce lion passed by it. The fierce lion. He was talking about the fierce lion. The lions in the, on earth are very voracious. They have a very strong appetite. The psalmist in Psalm 17 verse 12 said, Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as it were, a young lion locking in secret places. A young lion locking in secret places. So the lion and lioness are greedy of their prey. They are voracious. They are hungry. There is this hunger that is burning in them. So the hunger for the things of the kingdom must burn in you. You must develop this spiritual hunger for the things of the kingdom. You must be thirsty and hungry for the things of the kingdom. Allow the zeal of the Lord to eat you up. The zeal of the house of the Lord must eat you up. Be voracious in the realm of the spirit. Develop the appetite for the things of the kingdom. That is when you can walk like a spiritual lion in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. You can do nothing in this kingdom without developing the spiritual hunger. So for you to do wonders on it, you must develop this spiritual trust and hunger in the kingdom of God. Like a lion and like a lioness. Yes, Lord. Lions don't walk alone. As these lions are voracious, they never walk alone. Lions hunt for their prey together. Ten lions and lioness can hunt for their prey. They can hunt for a single prey. They work together in groups. Even with the baby lion. Even with the young lions. So as children of the kingdom, you must never walk alone. There is a club in England called Liverpool. And the slogan of this club is, we never walk alone. So in the spirit realm, we must not walk alone. We must walk together with the children of the kingdom. So that the power in the kingdom can be reinforced. You reinforce the spiritual power by walking together. You fight spiritual battles together with the children of the kingdom. 
Because one shall exchange a thousand, two shall exchange ten thousand. You put the exponential power of the kingdom to work. You magnify the power of the kingdom by working in unity, just like the lions. In Proverbs chapter thirty, verse twenty-nine, he said, "There be three things which which go away. Yeah, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A lion which is strongest among beasts. There is a way lion move on it. Lions are majestic." In movement, lions are majestic in movement. They move in a majestic way. Lion move like kings in the forest. Lions walk like kings and queens in the forest. So that means lions are the kings and the queens of the desert. They are majestic in their movement. Every children of the kingdom must walk in a way that we inflict fear on the kingdom of darkness. You must walk in a way that people will fear you. You must be majestic in your movement. You must walk in a way that people will respect your movement. You don't just walk anyhow. You walk to command respect. You walk to command respect in this earthly realm. Hey, walk to command respect. People will even respect you when you walk. There is a walk. That command respect in the physical realm and in the spirit realm. There are steppings that command respect in the physical realm and in the spirit realm. Begin to take these steppings. Inflict fear on the kingdom of darkness by your work. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lions are very great by using their teeth. The greatness of their teeth so unique. In Psalm fifty-eight verses, break their teeth, O God. In their mouth, break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. This is talking about the demonic lion. The psalmist was praying to God that God should break the teeth of a demonic lion. So God can break the teeth of a demonic lion. So as the demonic lions possess teeth, so also the lions in the kingdom of light are having great teeth. The greatness of their teeth. Men like prophets joy also saw nations. Come up against Israel, strong nations without number, whose teeth are as the teeth of a lion, and these nations have chic teeth of a great lion. Whose teeth are the teeth of a lion? They are as the teeth of a lion. So the teeth of lion, so unique. The teeth of lions so unique. And in this kingdom, we carry the power of these spiritual teeth. There is a teeth you carry in the realm of the spirit. Do you know that your spirit man possesses teeth? There are teeth present in the mouth of your spirit man. In the realm of the spirit, you have spiritual teeth. And you can use these spiritual teeth to bite in the days of battles. You can use spiritual teeth to bite in the days of battles. 
you can exhibit the power of God by making use of your spiritual teeth. In 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 28, it says, And he went and found his carcass, casting the way, and the ash, and the long lion standing by the carcass, and the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor tore the ash. In 1 Kings chapter 13, you see a prophet who was instructed by God not to eat and drink until he received instruction from God. But another false prophet deceived him and he ate and drank. He ate and drank because he received a false prophecy from a false prophet. And the Lord sent a lion to tear him on his path. And as he was walking, a young lion teared him, roared at him, and this young lion tore him. He was eaten by a lion. This explains the great power of lion. God gave great power to lions. This kingdom is a kingdom of lion. Do you know that this lion was sent to a prophet of God? God used a lion to deal with a prophet of God. God used a lion to deal with his own prophet. Because this prophet is not useful in the kingdom. God used a lion to deal with a prophet. This prophet is a lion in the realm of the spirit. And only a lion can deal with a lion. That is why Daniel was dealt with by the king. By throwing him to the den of a lion. The king threw Daniel into the den of a lion. In Daniel chapter 6. Because of the great power of lions. But God was with Daniel. Because Daniel was a lion. There was a lion in Daniel. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion in the den could see this lion. And their mouths were shut. Daniel was in the den of the lion. And he was playing with lions. Because he was a lion in the realm of the spirit. The spiritual eyes of these physical lions were opened and they could see the lion of the tribe of Judah through the image of Daniel. They could not defeat Daniel because of the great power of God in Daniel. If you look at God's provision for lion, it is so unique. God filled the appetite of young lions. He gave them power to hunt for their prey. He gave them power, great power to hunt for their prey. They have this power and they are exercising this power always. They could exercise the power throughout the scripture. Men like Job in Job 38, Job chapter 38, he saw lions as God gave them strength to hunt for their prey. The psalmist David also saw lions, young lions, running after their prey and seeking 
for their meat from God. So God gave them the energy to roar. God gave them the energy to gather. By the mighty hand of God, God filled them with good things. We the children of the kingdom have access to good things in the kingdom of our God. We have access to good things because we are spiritual lion and lioness in the realm of our father. Lions look for their prey. They move to their secret places and they hunt for their prey from their secret places. In Psalm 10 verse 9, it talks about the secret place of lions. They hunt for, for their for their prey in, in their secret places. They hibernate in their secret places and they camouflage in their secret places. Children of the kingdom must engage the mystery of spiritual hibernation, spiritual habitation, and spiritual camouflage. You must camouflage before you can own for your prey in the realm of the spirit. You must engage the power of your secret place. You must develop a secret place. Lions dwell in their secret place. They launch attack from their secret places. Lions launch their attack from their secret places. If you cannot launch your attack from your secret places, you cannot overcome battles. That is why he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you roar from your secret places and you rent your prey into pieces just like the generation of God. The men of God were so enlarged that they dwell on earth like as a lion. And they tear at the arm with the crown of their head. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, Moses talks about the men of God. They were very powerful. We are the spiritual God. Yes, Lord. We are the spiritual God. In the kingdom of our Father, we are enlarged and we've been enlarged. We are to tear our prey. We carry the crown, which is the glory of God. The crown of glory. The crown of grace. The crown of life. The crown of faith. The crown of righteousness. We have these crowns in the kingdom. And the psalmist shouted. He says, tear my soul like a lion. Let it tear my soul like a lion, rending it in, in pieces, why there is none to deliver. It was talking about the power of God. The power of God can tear our soul like a lion. We have a power that can tear. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 2, the great psalmist saw the great power of God. David saw the great power of God. Something so unique about the lion is that they always carry their prey to their den. They always move their prey to their den. Prophet Naum in Naum chapter 2 verse 12 saw this mystery. That the lion fills his dens with raving. They fill their dens with their prey. Lions will always carry the, their prey 
to their dens. They carry this prey to their secret place. Do you know that you cannot fight battles outside your secret places? Even if you move outside your secret places, you must move your enemy back to your secret place so that you can defeat your enemy in your secret place. You overcome all the battles in your secret place and from your secret place. If you can stay in your secret place, you launch attack and you deceive your enemies until you move your enemy to your secret place for destruction. You can destroy your enemy in your secret place. So move your enemy to your secret place. Lions don't stay too long outside their secret places. Lions don't stay too long outside their secret places. They launch attack and they quickly return to their secret places. You must engage this principle as lions and lioness in the kingdom of God. Engage these principles. You launch your attack. Because if you fail to launch your attack, you will be attacked. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If you fail to launch your attack, you will be attacked. That is why the armor, the spiritual armors present in Ephesians chapter 6 is for you to launch your attack. You have the spiritual armors and you are to launch your attack by engaging the spiritual armors. The spiritual armors in your hand are defensive and offensive. Yes, Lord. They are defensive and offensive. You defend yourself and you attack your enemy by engaging these armors. Many shall perish because they fail to launch attack. There is no how you can develop your spiritual strength without launching attack. The man called Job in Job chapter 4, verse 11. Put this down in his writing. The old lion perished for lack of prey. You must launch attack because if you fail to launch attack, you will definitely perish for lack of spiritual prey. He says, And his thoughts, lions web, are scattered abroad. The young lions are scattered abroad. The hungry lions are scattered abroad. So you must be hungry in the realm of the spirit. So that you will not perish. You develop your strength. And you have more strength. By feeding on your prey. The more you overcome battles, the more you develop your spiritual strength. The more you overcome more battles, the more you develop your spiritual strength. You move from one level of strength to another. From one realm of power to another realm of power. By fighting battles. And by establishing your victories in battles. If you can win battles, you will move from the lower realm of power to the higher realm of power. That is why lions develop their strength by fighting battles. They fight different beasts based on their sizes. You see lion killing cows in the wilderness. You see lions fighting against kangaroo in the desert. They fought against small, small animals. Now they, f- they are fighting against higher animals. 
so that they will not perish for lack of food. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So you must demonstrate the power that is in you by fighting battles like lions because we are lions in the realm of the spirit lions don't just stay in any environment yes lord hallelujah lions and lioness don't just stay in any environment they have specific environments where they stay they don't, don't just walk anyhow they have specific environment where they stay they have the arena you see them in the forest walking in the forest you see them in the thickest prophet jeremiah saw this mystery he saw lions in the thickest roaming about in the thickest Roaming about in the ticket, in the midst of wood, you see them in big forest. Lions walking in the wilderness. You see lion in dangerous places on it. They don't just walk any hour but you see them in dangerous places places like the mountains song of solomon chapter 4 you see solomon saw lions on mountain lions occupying the mountains of the leopard He saw the lions then inside the mountain. Lions walk in deserts. You see them in deserts. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 6, saw lions in deserts. He saw this great beast in deserts, both the young and the old lions, walking in the midst of vipers and fiery flying serpents and these serpents did not destroy them he saw them in the midst of other dangerous animals and these dangerous animals did not destroy them they cannot fight them because they are more powerful than serpents and our world is the wilderness our world is the forest that Jeremiah saw in Jeremiah chapter 4 and chapter 5. Our word is the wood, spiritual wood, ticket that Jeremiah saw. Our word is the mountains that Solomon saw. And it is the forest, the desert, the desolate places that Isaiah saw. You see lion in dangerous places. And this lion in these dangerous places can easily attack the sheep food. They can easily attack the sheep. We must be careful of demonic lions. So David was with the sheep of his father in the wilderness and the lion came and roared at him and he took the lion and tore the lion so lion came to attack the sheep of david in first samuel chapter 17 you see david in the wilderness it gave illustration Prophet Amos in Amos chapter 3, verse 12, saw lions in the wilderness. He saw demonic lions attacking the children of Israel 
which are the sheep. Prophet Micah saw lions. He saw spiritual lions. And these spiritual lions are the remnant of Israel. These are the lions of light. In Micah chapter 5. So lions attack the sheep fold. Lion attack the congregation of sheep. Although we are sheep, we are also lions in the realm of the spirit. So lions are causing universal terror. Because we are lions in the realm of the spirit, we can cause universal terror on it. People talk about terrorists on it. But more powerful than terrorists are spiritual terrorists. The kingdom of light is the kingdom of spiritual terrorists. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We are spiritual terrorists on it. Jeremiah saw spiritual terrorists in his writings. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 15. The young lions roared upon him. The young lions roared. These are universal terrorists. So young lions can make a whole city to be in great pandemonium. Young lion can cause a great disaster in a city. Just a single lion can destroy a whole city. A single lion can shake a whole city. So we are lions. We are spiritual terrorists on it. We are to shake it. We can shake nations. And the president of nations will bow. We can shake nations. You engage this mystery to shake nations. And the president of nations will bow. You can take the possessions of nations. You can occupy the gate of nations. Because you shall be strong in the gates of many nations. You are to carry the gate of nations. The way Samson carried the gate of a whole nation. And he took it to the top of a mountain. Because he was a lion. He knew that he was a lion. So we are lions. Prophet Amos in Amos chapter 3 verse 8 also saw lions running. And this spiritual lion was God. He said, Who will not fear when the lion roar? Everybody will definitely fear. So whenever the prophecies of God are coming forth, they are like lions. These prophecies are coming out of the mouth of lion. They are coming out of the mouth of lions. So we must demonstrate the power of lions on it. So that the enemies will not run circles like criminals. We are to ransack our enemies. <laughs> we are to bind our enemies as the lions in the kingdom of light. So that the lions in the kingdom of darkness will not ransack us. They will not bind us like criminals. The lions in the kingdom of darkness can easily destroy us if we fail to demonstrate our power on it. They took Daniel. And they throw him into the den of lions. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. So we must rise up 
as kingdom of lions on earth. Kingdom of lions on earth. Men like Samson were able to slay lions. Men like Samson, he was able to slay lions on earth because he recognized himself as a spiritual lion. He was on his way to Timna. And as he came to the vineyard of Timna in Judges chapter 14, a young lion roared at him. A young lion roared against him. And the spirit of lions came upon Samson. The spirit of lion is the spirit of the Lord. And he rent the lion as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. Wait a minute, please. Get this point. Whenever you are moving on your path to greatness, lions will definitely roar at you. Demonic lions will roar at you. But if you can engage the spirit of spiritual lions, the spirit of the chief lion, which is the spirit of the Lord, you will overcome without using any substance. And Samson had nothing in his hand, but he was able to defeat this lion. He rent the lion as he would have rent a kid. So demonic lions are powerless. You have power than demonic lions. You have power than demonic lions. Yes, Lord. You can overcome demonic lions by engaging the power that is in you. Men like David was able to overcome lions in the wilderness. He overcomes spiritual lions. And he was able to overcome physical lions. He fought against lions in the wilderness. He fought against bear. He fought against leopard. He fought against lion. And he rent them as he would have rent a kid. He also fought against the uncircumcised Philistine who was a lion on it. He fought against the uncircumcised Philistine. He was able to defeat Goliath. And David produced generals. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, David was able to produce generals. And these generals also possessed the spirit of David. They were carrying the spirit of David. Generals like Beniah. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valiant man on earth. He lived in Kabzi. And he has done many wonderful acts on earth. He slew two lion like men of Moab. And he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. He slew a lion in the midst of a pit. Do you know what it means to kill a lion in the time of snow? It is a difficult thing indeed. Because in the time of snow, men are always passive. But during this time of snow, he was very active. He was led by the Spirit of God. And in the midst of a pit, not on a plain ground, not in the, on the valley, not in the desert, not on the top of a mountain, it was in the midst of a pit, very difficult. He slew a lion. Beniah was very great. He was a mighty man of valor. 
other generals of David were able to kill the brother of Goliath in that same second Samuel chapter 23 you see the act the demonstrations of the generals of David these are generals they are the lions of David on earth yes Lord do you know that as a lion you can produce honey even a dead lion can produce honey in Judges chapter 14 as Thompson slew the young lion in the vineyard of Timna after many days the carcass of the lion was filled with swan of bees and honey came out of the carcass of the lion people can see the carcass but they were blind to see the honey the mystery of the honey coming out of the carcass of the lion honey were coming out of the carcass of the lion do you know that as a lion in this kingdom you can produce honey you can produce honey that will feed your word the dead lions in the kingdom of light are the lions that are fall short of the glory of God the dead lions are the spiritually dead men in this kingdom these are the fallen lions they are the fallen generals so in the eyes of men they are powerless but in the eyes of God they are still carrying anointing to do exploits do you know that the gift of the Lord is without repentance it is without repentance and God left Saul several years after God left Saul Saul was still carrying the anointing of God Saul was a dead lion the carcass of Saul was still carrying anointing on it so dead lion can produce honey that can feed the baby lion the lion cub dead lion can still produce honey that can feed the nations dead lion can produce honey that can feed the nations So you must be very careful whenever you are dealing with a spiritual father that has fell in the eyes of men you must be very careful whenever you are dealing with a spiritual father that just commits dead sin because despite the fact that they committed sin they are still carrying anointing they can still produce honey that can feed you they can still produce honey that can feed your nation they can still produce honey that can feed the, your generation the dead spiritual men in this kingdom the dead spiritual fathers in this kingdom can still produce honey do you know that Samuel was led to Eli who was spiritually dead Eli was spiritually dead and Samuel trained under Eli and he cashed the anointing 
So Samuel caught the anointing from the ministry of Eli, who was spiritually dead. So the dead Eli was able to feed Samson, Samuel with spiritual honor. So Samuel received his mandate under the ministry of Eli. The dead Elisha, Elisha was physically dead. And another dead man was cast into a sepulchre. And spiritual honey flow out of Elisha. Spiritual honey flowed out of the bones, the dry bones of Elisha. And this dead body rose up. So the dry bone of Elisha raised dead body. The dry bone of Elisha raised dead body. Although the bones were dry, but the bones were still releasing honey in the realm of the spirit. If you can understand this mystery, you will make waves in the kingdom of light. You will make waves in the kingdom of Christ. If you can understand this wonderful mystery. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We are in the kingdom of lions. Whether the lions in this kingdom are living or dead. They still carry the potentials of the kingdom. They still carry the power of the kingdom. Amen. So lions represent many things in this kingdom. Lion and lioness represent a lot of things in this kingdom. The kingdom of Christ is a kingdom of lions. We are the lions. In this world, hey, we are the lions in this world. In Numbers chapter 24 verse 9, it says, He crushed, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall tear him up? Blessed is he that blessed thee, and cursed is he that cursed thee. He lay down as a lion, as a, and as a great lion. That lion is Israel. We are the spiritual Israel, the church of God. The spiritual Israel is the lion that is lying down. He lay down as a lion. And as a great lion. We are that lion and we are that great lion. The church represents a great lion. Even while you lie down, the devil will be scared of you. Even while you are sleeping. The kingdom of darkness will be scared of you. And while you are lying down, blessed is he that blessed thee, and cursed is he that cursed thee. Please, can you get that mystery? You can put that mystery to work in the realm of the spirit, so that while you are sleeping, you will be attracting blessing in the realm of dreams. There are some people, they attract blessings even while they are sleeping. They don't have to work to attract the blessing. They don't sweat to attract blessings. And cause the seed that cause it. So while you are sleeping, if there is anyone that will attack you in the realm of the dream, that person will die for it. Because you are operating based on a dimension of kingdom power called the mystery of lions. Many people will try to attack you in the realm of the dream. But cost is he that causes thee. So it is impossible for them to prevail. Because you are a lion. You are a lion. And God will always give his beloved sleep. He 
in Genesis chapter 49 verse 9, he said, Judah is a lion's web. Judah is a lion's web. So we have both young lion and old lion in Judah. He crushed as a lion and as an old lion who shall rose him up. The tribe of Judah also represents the kingdom of Christ. Do you know that Christ is a product of the tribe of Judah? Christ is from the tribe of Judah. So Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So lion also represents Christ in the realm of the spirit. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That John the beloved saw. And it was written in Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. It was from the root of David. And John the beloved saw a revelation. In Revelation chapter 5. A book that was seed. This book was seed in the realm of the spirit. And no one could open this book in heaven. And suddenly there was a lamp. Suddenly there was a lamp. Although the lamp has been slain. And the lamp sprinkled his blood. Upon the book that was seed with seven seed, this lamp was carrying the seven spirit of God, and he engaged the seven spirit of God to remove the seal upon this book. Are we still together, please? The lamp engaged the seven spirit of God to remove. The seven seal upon this book. And the moment he removed the seven seals upon this book, the lion was trans- the lamp was transformed to a lion. So the lamp of God became a lion after his resurrection. Jesus was a lamp on earth. Throughout his earthly ministry, he was a lamp. But after his resurrection, Jesus became a lion. He was a lion. Jesus did not use the power of a lamp on it. He only used the power. Jesus, get this. Jesus only used the power of a lamp on it. He did not use the power of a lion on it. He used the power of a lion after his resurrection. And he has delivered that power of lions to the church. That is why we can do greater things on it. We have the seven horns of God. The seven eyes of God. The seven spirit of God. Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 11. Saw the seven spirit of God. The church is carrying the seven spirit of God. This is the spirit of lions. God is also protecting his church by the mystery of lions. Yes, Lord. In Isaiah chapter 31, verse 4, God protects his church by engaging this mystery of lions. And God can easily execute his judgment on it by engaging this mystery of lions. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 13, he said, I will reckon the money that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. So God can break bones as a lion. He can execute his judgment on it. He can chastise us by engaging this mystery. And he can destroy our enemies by engaging this mystery. That is why we must abide in our secret place. We abide in our secret place. In Lamentation chapter 3 verse 10. And we await, we wait for the Lord. 
we launch out from our secret place because of the judgment of God God can execute his judgment the way he dealt with Ephraim as a lion and I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah Hosea chapter 5 verse 14 So God can deal with us by engaging this mystery. God can devour the works of darkness by engaging this mystery. The mystery of lions also represents the boldness of the saints. As written in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. We are bold as a lion. We have this boldness because we are carrying the spirit of boldness. Not the spirit of fear. Not the spirit of doubt. The spirit that is in us is the spirit of boldness. And that is why we are brave on it. Just like Saul and Jonathan in 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 23. They were stronger than lions on earth. They were so brave. They were lovely and pleasant in their lives. They were brave men on earth. Men like Beniah. Men like the generals of David in 2 Samuel chapter 23. They were able to rot wonders. These generals were lions. They were brave men. David did not surround himself with lions. David surrounded himself with little sheep. And he trained them to become lions. And David went to the streets. And he took men that were depressed. Men that were casted out of their houses. Men that were poor. And he gathered them together. Men that were in pains. And he trained them. And David became their generals. So David became their chief. Commander in chief. He trained these men to become generals. On earth. So David became their chief. So we must train lions in this kingdom. The church is for the training of lions on earth. We train men. We train weak men. And produce lions out of them. The mystery of lions also represent the powers of our enemies. The cruel power of our enemies. We have the roaring lions. These roaring lions are the enemies. The devil is the roaring lion. Walking about, seeking whom he may devour. We have a lot of roaring lions. In our world, Walking about. And the great prophet of old saw these running lions. The persecutors. These are the running lions. David saw this in Psalm 22 verse 13. They gaped upon me with their mouth as a raven and a running lion. These are the persecutors. Paul in his epistle to Timothy warned Timothy and he charged Timothy up. He said, I was delivered out of the mouth of lions in my ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 17. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lions. It is only God that can deliver you out of the mouth of the lions. And that is why you must develop yourself to become a lion in the realm of the spirit so that you can silence all that lion.
So the mystery of lion also represents the fear of the slothful. In Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13, yes, Lord. The slothful man says, There is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. Do you know that the slothful are always scared of this world? The slothful are always scared in this world. Do you know that you have to prepare yourself to cope in some atmosphere? Men in this world will intimidate you. We have intimidators. The universe is a world of intimidators. People are ready to intimidate you in the kingdom of light. And that is why you must be prepared. Apostles will intimidate apostles. Prophets will intimidate prophets. Pastors will intimidate pastors. Teachers will intimidate teachers. Doctors will intimidate doctors. People are ready to intimidate. And if you cannot intimidate, you cannot prevail in this world. Because you will be scared to go out of the street and compete with them. This world is a world of competition. So you must be prepared to compete with them. Unless you won't be able to challenge them. They will intimidate you and destroy your destiny while you live. The slothful man, the unprepared man is always scared. That is why you must be prepared by engaging the mystery of lions. I challenge you to be prepared. I steer you up. Rise up. Be prepared. As a businessman and businesswomen, be prepared. If you are not prepared, you will not be able to cope in some places. People will hijack your customers and they will pack all your customers. You cannot do anything because you are powerless. You must be powerful to challenge them. The mystery of lions. So this word is power versus power. There is a continuous torso of powers. And the lions with greatest power will prevail. That kingdom of lions with greatest power is the church of God. The grace of God is upon you because you carry the seven spirit of God. As a natural man, ordinary man on earth, you can overcome because you have the grace of God. You are a superman in the realm of the spirit. Because you are carrying the grace of God, there is a special grace upon you. Isaiah saw this grace. Prophet Isaiah saw this grace in Isaiah chapter 11. He saw Jesus Christ carry the seven spirit of God. The spirit of the Lord God, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are the seven spirit of God. And seven represent spiritual perfection in the realm of the spirit. So spiritual liars on earth are operating in these realities of kingdom power. You are carrying the seven spirit of God. That is why you can overcome. In that same Isaiah chapter 11 verse 7, it says the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Do you know what it means? For a lion to eat straw like the ox, the lion shall eat grass like ruminants. A lion does not have a complex stomach. Lion cannot eat grass in the physical realm. It is impossible for lions to eat grass in the physical realm. Only ruminant animals can eat grass in the physical realm because they have four complex stomach. Rumen reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. But in the realm of the spirit, God is ready to feed us with grass. This grass represents the revelation knowledge of God. This is the power of spiritual lions. The demonic lions cannot eat straw. But there are spiritual straw in the kingdom of Christ. These spiritual straws represent the word of God. This is the revelation knowledge of God. 
So we develop the power of God by feeding on the spiritual straw of God. Just like the ox, you see, just like the ox, that ox represents the lamp of God. So the lion shall eat straw like the ox. There is something that can transform the ox to a lion. Are we still together, please? Hallelujah. The lamp will be transformed in the realm of the spirit to lions. Do you know that the kingdom of Christ is the kingdom of lamp and Jesus is the shepherd? That was in the earthly ministry of Jesus. Right now, in the heavenly ministry of Jesus, Jesus is not a shepherd. Jesus is a lion at the right hand of God right now. And the kingdom of Christ is not the kingdom of sheep only. We have been transformed in the realm of the spirit to lions. Although we are still eating grasses like lamb, we are still feeding on spiritual grasses. But we have been transformed in the realm of the spirit to become spiritual lions. We are spiritual lions. There is a special grace upon us. Yes, Lord. If Jesus can change from a lamp to a lion before the throne of grace, and we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, we are the brothers of Jesus and we are equal with Jesus. We are also equal to Jesus in this earthly realm. We have been transformed also from lamp to lion by the grace of God which is upon us. And we are carrying four complex stomach in the realm of the spirit. We have our room, reticulum, omasum and apomasum in the realm of the spirit. This complex stomach will help us to digest the revelation knowledge of God. So the lions shall eat straw like the bullock. Isaiah also saw that revelation again. In Isaiah chapter 65 verse 25, he said the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. The lion shall eat straw like the bullock. He saw it again. This is a revelation that transvers the scripture. The mystery of lions. So as lions, we are carrying the crowns of God. And we are kings on earth. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 12, he said, The king's wrath is as the running of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. The king's wrath is as the running of a lion. We are kings. And whenever we release our rods upon the kingdom of darkness, it is like the roaring of a lion. We roar against the kingdom of darkness. We go wide in the realm of the spirit. We must be violent to lay hold on our possessions on it. We must be violent spiritually. We must be violent physically. And we must be violent emotionally. You must be violent in this kingdom. For the kingdom of God suffered about, and the violence I take it by force. So there is a violence going on in the kingdom of God. This kingdom suffered violence. So there is a crisis going on. And the violence shall take it by force. The kingdom is a violent kingdom. So the violence I lay hold on the kingdom, it's sovereign violence. And the violence I take it by force. You take it by force. There is a force you must engage. And the moment you understand the mystery of lions, you can take it by force. That is when people will fear you on it. In Proverbs chapter 20 verse 2 The fear of a king is as the running of a lion People will just fear you Because anytime you walk You walk like a running lion The moment you enter into any environment People will be running because of you They will be running at hard and scatter Because of you They respect the authority that you are carrying They see Christ through you 
they see Christ in you. That is what the lions saw in the life of Daniel. When Daniel was in the den of lion, this lion saw Christ in Daniel. They saw the lion of the tribe of Judah. Although Daniel was standing physically, but in the spirit realm, the lion of the tribe of Judah was in the den of lions. These lions could not attack the lions. This lion could not attack the chief lion. Because these lions were created by the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the moment you carry the lion of the tribe of Judah, people begin to fear you. You just inflict fear upon me. You inflict fear upon me. And the more you inflict fear, the more your dominion on it. The more your authority on it. The more your power on it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.